My name is Dave Banks and I'm going to be walking you through a WinLab demo here um, in the next few minutes. And if you're interested in trying a demo for yourself, uh, click on the Try Demo button. So this is the login screen. We'll go ahead and log in and set up a small roof. First thing that greets you when you log in is a list of all the roofs that you've created. And we're going to create a new one. You give it a name that you like and then you're going to go down to the um, arrays box and choose the product. So if you have multiple products in WinLab Solar, uh, they'll all be listed here. And it may be a different tilt or it might be an east-west versus a north-south system. Then you enter in the size of panels you're putting in. We're entering in a typical size panel, six and a half feet by 3.3 feet. Those dimensions in feet, incidentally, are um, your choice. So when we do the testing for you and enter the data in, that can be done in feet or meters or whatever units you like. And that um, is what shows up on the screen here. Um, the row-to-row -row spacing is the on-center spacing between the panels. Um, and the effective wind area, that's an important parameter. That's the number of panels that share the wind load. That's your tributary area for, uh, for your uplift. Now we're going to lay out the roof. The roof is 100 feet by 100 feet. And we're going to choose some pressure units. If you're working in the US, you're probably going to choose PSF, or pounds per square foot. And that um, is going to be controlled in part by the design wind speed, which is calculated from ASC 7. We're going to go with a 25-foot tall building with a one-foot parapet in the corner. Um, taller parapets lead to higher wind loads, and taller buildings lead to higher wind loads. Um, so there we get our reference winch pressure, again, from ASC 7. And we're going to make it symmetric. Every corner is also 25 feet tall with a one-foot parapet. Um, and later on, we'll come back and we'll adjust this. Uh, this is fit maybe if you're putting in a bid and you just, you know, the roof corners might be slightly different in size. So here's what the wind loads look like on that roof. You see these big red regions um, emanating from the north corners. That's the result of uh, the vortex. There's two vortices up in that corner, a strong one and a weak one. The strong one makes the red, and the weak one you can hardly see in this case. Um, that's because we're working with the Seahawk PV2 15 degree data. That's what we chose. And uh, in that particular case, there's no wind deflector, and so the minor vortices have almost no effect at all. So we create an array and we resize the array. And as you're working on the array, you see the loads in PSF, since that's the units we've chosen, displayed over there to the right on the lower right of the screen. Um, we can set the precise distance to the edge of the array um, by uh, clicking in those boxes up there, just above the, the, the display of the uh, um, wind loads on each panel. Um, you can toggle back and forth, as we just did, between the roof view and the array view, so you can see what the loads are. As, you, as the roof starts to fill up, um, it's more apparent what the loads are across the roof by looking at the loads on the arrays themselves. Um, and you can snap the arrays to an existing array so that they're all lined up perfectly with each other. Um, and here we're building a gap in the middle of the array to allow for something like a skylight and access to the skylight, which is commonly required by the um, fire department. Um, we're also leaving a, a minimum five foot space around the edge. That's also often required by the fire department. So we create the array, we snap to, um, and you see the values in PSF. Later on, we're going to create a larger roof, and you'll see that the values in that case are a fair bit uh, higher. The loads scale with the size of the building. Um, and there are some reports out there, um, old reports from wind tunnel studies which didn't incorporate this, but this is part of uh, SEAC PV2. It's going to be part of the building codes in Canada and in the U.S. in the next couple of years. All right, so we've essentially filled the roof up now and it comes time to export this data. So uh, it's exported as a, um, a grid or a, a map that looks a lot like what we were just looking at so that your structural engineer can um, turn these values into a diagram of attachments and ballast parts. So there's, once we get this into Excel, uh, the comma separated value file, all zeros represent parts of the roof where there were no panels and where there were panels, we're seeing um, values in pounds per square foot. And we like to use the conditional formatting so that we can see 
um, where the loads are highest and where they're lowest. We see the edge effects there. You see the high loads along the top, the exposed north edges of the array. Um, that's another feature that's in SEOC uh, and in uh, ASC 7. And you're going to hand this over to your structural engineer and they're going to turn this into uh, either a quick estimate for uh, a bidding process or a detailed diagram if it's your final drawing. So we're going to jump back into WinLab and make another roof. This time it's going to be a bigger roof and a little more complicated. Once again, we name the roof. And we're going to choose the same um, tilt of panel so that we can compare the numbers. We'll see the numbers are a little more severe. The uplift is greater on a system that has uh, on a larger roof. Um, once again, we have the tributary of four. So this time the roof is 300 feet wide, 200 feet long. We're making it the same height here, but if the height were greater, the numbers would also go up. So that's critical. So again, you see this pattern of uh, corner vortices making higher loads um, up in the north corners and also somewhat higher loads down the south corners. And then you have this big middle area of the roof where the loads are much lower. Obviously, that's a much better place to put your PV. The, um, if you're concerned with ballast or a number of attachments. Um, but in this roof we're going to lay out, we're going to fill the roof. And that's a fairly common requirement. So we're going to venture into those higher load areas in the corners. There are some um, older methods out there in industry where um, the loads on the panels are independent of where you put them on the roof. And this is not compatible with SEOC PV2 or the forthcoming ASC 716 standards or the NBCC. These, this, this approach has, uh, has been um, rejected by the wind engineering community. Is, uh, it basically misses out on this, this important aspect of the physics where it's the vortex, the swirling flow in the corner roof that is creating the highest loads. Um, so here we're laying out this array, and once again, we've got a bunch of skylights we have to avoid. So we uh, create an array and, and drag it and snap it to the existing grid. Um, once again, we've picked a tributary area of four panels. Um, this is a good time to talk about tributary area. Um, tributary area is the number of panels that will lift together. If you lift on one panel, can you lift it up out of the array without lifting any of its neighbors? Or will it lift up the half of the nearest panels or all of the nearest panels before it lifts significantly off the roof? Um, this is an important concept. It's also described in some detail in, in the Structural Engineers Association of California PV2 document. Um, and there'll be more information in the next edition of that about um, how to determine, appropriately determine what the tributary area is. So again, we've selected four here, and that's fairly typical for a system that doesn't have rails. All right, so again, we've got these uh, firefighter paths around the perimeter of the roof, um, through the PV to access the skylights. Um, and we've filled the northern half of the roof with uh, as much PV as it can handle. Um, Again, we're seeing the numbers displayed to the right as we create the array, so you can get a sense of uh, how much ballast you're gonna need. We see the edge effects on the array. And in this case, we are going to um, show you how to do an L-shaped building. So we've laid out a rectangle here but in fact, uh, we're only gonna lay out PV where you're, where you're seeing it, and we're gonna show you how you can, through a combination of rectangular buildings, get the values for a building that is uh, like an L on its side. So, the reason you have to do this is that the strength of those vortices, each vortex is dictated by the size of that face on the building. So, on the L-shaped building, it's that, that, that inverted L that we're doing. It's the um, 
upper, it's the northeast corner that's creating the highest loads. Um, and so our loads will be exaggerated in the northwest corner. Um, and so here we're laying out um, the north edge and we've got a less severe um, northeast corner. Now over in the southwest corner, because this is a portion of the building, we're gonna turn that vortex off. So here's an important trick. Um, we go into the roof and you'll see some check buttons called on major and minor vortex. We're gonna turn off the two vortices down there in the southeast corner because that corner doesn't really exist, right? We're building this L-shaped building out of a strip across the top and um, a block in the bottom and, and a larger block. So now we've turned off that vortex over there. We have an array that's hanging off the roof and um, those results are, are gonna be ignored. So here we go, we're gonna make our third roof. It's the east arm. And again, we haven't had to touch the array. So the original array is as created. We gotta turn those vortices back on in the southeast corner. And we're gonna turn off the northwest corner vortices because that corner doesn't exist now in this partial building um, piece of the larger building. So we have to reposition the roof underneath the panels. And that's done by typing in the distance from the edge over there on the right. So now we have the east arm of the building, and the array's overlaid in the right spot. We've turned off the vortex from the, uh, uh, vortices from the west edge, um, at least the one from the northwest edge. And now we'll export that as well. So essentially by treating this L-shaped building as three separate buildings, we're able to correctly capture the effects of each of the corners. So here's all the data from each of the buildings in Excel. All right, so we have the west arm, we're dragging it over, or the east arm, we're dragging it over to the east side. We're, um, we've combined the three roofs now into a single output. And the same as before, your structural engineer is going to use that information to decide where to put the uh, attachments and where to put, um, about how much ballast to put in different locations. Thanks for joining us for this demonstration of Wind Lab Solar. Um, we believe it's the fastest way to get accurate wind loads um, on, for roof mounted solar that are compatible with existing and forthcoming uh, code requirements. Um, we'd love for you to sign up for a demo uh, and give it a spin and see for yourself. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me, Dave Banks here at CPP or any of the other members of our team. And um, look forward to talking with you.